Hello, my name's Mitch and I'm going to show you how I set up this sliding miter saw for more accurate cuts. Now, I promised you this about three weeks ago when I reviewed the, uh, this Evolution 3XL. Um, and in the interim, would you believe it, John Heiss has actually done a video covering pretty much the same sort of things. So, uh, in the good spirit of friendship that there is between YouTubers, even though I don't know John myself, um, take a look at his video. It's got some good points in it. I'll leave a description in, um, no, I won't leave a description. I'll leave a link in my description. Okay, let's get going. One of the first things we need to do is get rid of any advertising stickers that might be on the saw. These obviously uh, compromise the flatness of the table. So, we'll try and scrape those off. If you're lucky, they'll peel off reasonably okay. But these are leaving a little bit of gum, so I'll have to come back with some thinners and just clean that off. Well, would you believe none of the uh, thinners I regularly keep around the place actually touch the adhesive on that. So I've used a uh, card scraper to at least bring it down to the milling marks on the base so it's not actually uh, causing a difference in the height levels. So the important thing with a saw like this is that the, uh, the base that the work's going to sit on, which is the rotating table and these two outer wings, are nice and flat. And also that the fence is straight and flat and at 90 degrees to the table. And immediately I can see that the table in the center is very slightly higher. And it's not this insert, it is actually the aluminum table. So we'll have to adjust that. The fence is perfectly straight. But what we need to adjust, we need to take out this slight crown in the middle of the rotating table. To do that I'm going to use a, a levelling beam, which is basically a flat piece of wood with an edge on there, it's roughly about an inch wide with some, I've got 80 grit paper on here nice straight edge you can lay that on there you'll see it will actually rock over the high point and we just work that with central pressure backwards and forwards as you can see I've removed the fence to get full access to the table completed the table, it's nice and flat across its whole width and also at uh, the various angles. And of course you do have to flatten up into this, these corners at the back because when you've got it at an angle that's where your workpiece lays. The next thing to look at is the fence. There are different varieties. This is a one piece fence, so one piece casting, uh, milled so it's flat, which it is. I've checked that. Uh, if it wasn't, then you could uh, flatten it like the sole of a plane, put some sandpaper down on a, a flat surface, and uh, work it backwards and forwards until it's nice and flat and straight. And also square to the base, because obviously the base attaches to the table and we want the, the fence to be at right angles to the table. Now there is a slight problem with this fence and it's to do with the sliding portion at the top of this side. And the problem I've got is that uh, this section of fence sits slightly back from the, uh, the standard fence. So it needs to move forwards. You can probably see that screw in the back that tightens it up pushes it forward against the fence and so this area that's stepped backwards hasn't quite been milled enough to allow the fence to be pushed far enough forwards. So I can remove some material off this section here with uh, either a file or the levelling beam, something like that. So I'll just go ahead and do that and uh, come back when that's all sorted. So after a little bit of work, that's more like it. I've reinstalled the fence which is held on by four machine screws and uh, I've just slackened them off slightly so that I can move the fence and that will allow me to set it for uh, exactly 90 degrees when the machine is set to 90 degrees on the indent 
for that angle, which is there. So we tighten it down, and uh, hopefully the indents on the machine will be accurate uh, with respect to each other. So if you set up uh, at the 90 degree point, you should find that uh, all the other indents, 15, 30, 45, etc., should all lock off um, pretty accurately. So I've set it set it at 90. Or sorry, I should say I set it at zero, which is 90 degrees to the fence. Uh, and now let's just make sure that uh, the fence is indeed at 90 degrees to the blade. The ideal tools to do that uh, would be engineers tri squares uh, like this. But if you're just getting into woodworking, chances are you won't have any of those yet. So um, probably with your saw, you'd have got a piece of. Uh, marketing material printed on A4 or A5 these are normally cropped off very close to 90 you can check that all the angles of the paper are indeed the same and if they are then uh, that's pretty much guarantees that you've got 90 degrees so I'm going to do it using or I could do it using that piece of paper the other thing is if you don't have then you could use just a, an ordinary business card they're normally cropped at close enough to 90 for the initial setup. First thing I want to do is set the saw so it's plumb, in other words no tilt from either side. So I'll place my business card onto the table, move the card across until it touches the blade. And it's quite clear to see here that the top section has got a big gap when the bottom is touching so we need to tilt the saw uh, to the left. The reason for that is I've taken out the stops for the tilt action the um, 0 and the 45 and then we'll just snug off the the lever that holds that still wants to go a bit further but that's spot on so the card is now flat on the table and flat against the saw blade so that'll be close enough to begin with uh, the first, as I say the first measurement that we really concerned about is making the fence at 90 degrees to the blade when the mitre is set at uh, 0 degrees and this time I'll use uh, the sheet of paper that should go up against the fence it seems to be doing reasonably well so with the paper up against the fence move it across to the blade and it seems to be touching front to back. If we weren't uh, we can move the fence and uh, I'll show you now with an engineer square how we do that. So if I show you here I've moved the fence out of alignment the tri-square is tight against the blade we've got a big gap over here and no gap at all here so this end of the fence needs to come forward or the other end needs to go backwards so we can move that fence around until it's just touching the whole blade of the tri-square and the stock of the tri-square is tied against the saw blade then we can snug down the machine screws that hold the fence actually doing this can slightly move the fence so I just snug a couple of them I go back and recheck that's still looking good so to test that the blade is now cutting at 90 degrees to the fence I've got myself uh, a piece of this is MDF oak veneered you could use plywood Something stable is good. Just make sure the edges are parallel. So let's start by just cutting the very end off here and checking that with the tri square. Now I'm not sure if you can see, but there is a slight gap at this end. So it's not quite 90. And that suggests that the fence wants to go back uh, in that direction just a little bit. So 
So leaving just one of the uh, machine screws snugged up tight, I can just make an adjustment here. And we can try again. Like we can see, spot on, or at least as good as I would hope to check by eye. Now the, the check that we do by cutting the board in half, obviously will double up the error. So that's why we do that one. So uh, let's cut that section off. Move it along the straight edge of the fence, turn this over, against the fence, move them together. And that's about as good as it gets. I'm very happy with that. Now to get an accurate plum cut, what we'll do is we'll, well I'll put back in the two stops here for both the 45 and 0 degree tilt and we'll check everything with the, an engineer's tri-square rather than a business card. But I think you saw using a business card got you very close indeed and it allowed us to set up the 90 degree cut to the fence. So first of all let's unlock the saw so we can tilt it. This uh, screw on this side sets the 45 degrees. The nut that's on that machine screw is used to lock it in position so that should be 45 degrees when we've checked that we can then tighten up that nut and that should lock in the measurement unfortunately when you tighten up a nut like that what it's going to do is going to pull that machine screw up against the threads inside this abutment here so it's actually going to push the machine screw up a little bit more than it should do. So just bear that in mind when we set it up. The machine screw over here is for the zero degrees or plum cut. And we've obviously got a scale here with a, uh, an indicator. And I'll just point out before I move on too far, there's an indicator down here for the mitre angle. This is never going to be in the same plane as the actual markings on the saw base. So what it actually reads will depend very much on where you are. You can see there it's not reading anything near zero. Come around here. Now it's reading about zero. So what you've got to do is set these up and always read them from the same location. Now I always read uh, the indicator with my chin close to this uh, locking knob uh, with my line of sight through this um, channel here. So if I was going to be reading 15 degrees in this direction, I'd move around, again chin down here, looking at the indicator and it's right above the 15. And it's the same for all the intermediate angles as well. Now as we set this up for 90 degrees, I want to show you a little trick that I use. I haven't seen it anywhere else, um, but I'm not going to claim uh, the invention rights to it. I just got myself a little cap here. It's quite hard plastic, so it, uh, it won't compress very much. And it's the right size to fit on the top of that machine screw. What does it do for me? Well, if I set up 90, sorry, if I set up 0 degrees, with the cap on, then I can always return to zero degrees every time, no problem at all. But if I need to go a little off zero in the other direction, I can just pull the cap out, and that gives me an extra, this one gives me an extra roughly two and a half degrees of movement that side of zero, which can be really handy sometimes. And I do the same on the 45 degree stop back there, if you can see it. So I'll set that up for 45 degrees. And if I take the cap off, 
that will give me up to about 47 and a half. It just means if you're trying to mitre something and you, you've not got a, a perfectly square corner, it gives you flexibility either side of the uh, of the stopped angles. So I want to set up for zero. Check it using the tri square. Avoid um, the teeth when you're doing this. First of all, if you hit a tooth with uh, the square, you could chip it. They are a little bit brittle. But uh, secondly, if you're touching a tooth. Uh, then it will throw out the blade and you won't get 90 degrees. Now here I've still got to tip the top of the saw over towards the left. And that I would say is probably as close as I'm going to get it by eye. So let's get the saw completely out of the way. And now to lock that measurement off and that looks spot on. Now I've cut a section off my test board again but in the vertical position and I'll just check that up against each other having turned the piece around and that's a perfect fit. We set up the 45 and check for that in a similar way these two edges together and that's absolutely spot on and of course don't forget there are some excellent digital devices for checking and setting up your machines thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more videos like this please consider supporting me on patreon cheerio